God bless you and welcome to Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast. We appreciate and welcome all of you, our listeners around the world. Stay tuned to hear an exciting word from the Lord. First time, what happened? He went and it was okay for him, but then the second time he didn't. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell him, or the first time God didn't. Tell him. <coughs> first time God didn't tell him to, and he did it anyway, and it was. But what, was that the reason why he didn't win? What was the reason why he didn't win in seven? That was the first reason God didn't tell him to. But what else had happened? Anybody else help us? So, a, a, um, what's his name? Aiken stole in chapter 6, right? Yes. So, Aiken stole in chapter 6. And um, because God told him not to take anything, told him to take the gold and the silver and put it in the treasury, and everything else had to be burned. Aiken stole. Of course, Joshua didn't know this, but Joshua was supposed to consult God before he made his next move, right? He didn't. He sent how many troops? He sent like 3,000 troops, right? 3,200 troops to AI. And what happened to them when they went to AI? They, they, yeah, they lost men. They lost men and they got ran back, right? So they got chased back. God, in judgment, God revealed to Joshua what happened. And so Aiken, um, what happened to Aiken? What happened to him? He got stoned and burned. Only him? Was he tribe. the only person that got stoned and burned? Then wasn't his tribe too? His whole family, mm -hmm. his his dogs, his, his everything, right? Yeah. And then, so what happened to eight? And in eight, they went with God's instructions, mm -hmm. and they got to, and there was victory, and they got to keep their oxen. How did they do that? How did they? How did they get victory? Because they came around the west with some men. Uh huh. They I surrounded it, right? They surrounded it and went through, tricked them, and ran them out all out of the town. So, so was it only one town or two towns? Them and Bethel. AI Correct. And Bethel. Yes, AI and Bethel. Good. I did that on purpose. Because if I give you a quiz, you're going to focus on one thing. And one thing about Joshua and even in Ezekiel, they build up on each other. And in order to understand what happened in chapter 9, you got to find out what happened in chapter 7. And we're in chapter 8 to understand why they these people in chapter 9 feel the way they feel. So is everybody on the same track? What happened? Chapter 7, they didn't follow God's instructions. They didn't even ask God. Aiken stole. They had to purge themselves, right? So we left off in chapter 8. They was on Mount Gilgal, right? And uh, Mount Ebal. And that is when Joshua engraved the instructions from Moses onto stone at these monuments. One side was for a blessing and one side was for a curse, right? Mm -hmm. So they just consecrated themselves. They just was really in tune with God. And so now we come up to chapter nine. And this is called the rules of Gibeon, okay? So read um, verse one. Uh, very And there came about when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan, in the hill country, and in the lowland, and on all the boat, and on all the coast of the great sea to, toward Lebanon, the, Hitt, the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Canaanite, the Parasite, the Hebite, and the Jewelite heard of, heard of it. And do do two. Do verse two, two. That they gathered themselves together with one accord to fight with Joshua and with Israel. And so in some versions say against, because they're not going to fight with them. 
but it's just how you verb it. Let's go to Exodus 34. So they're fighting, so they're not fighting with them. They're no, against them. They're, they're against them. Okay. Fighting against them. So let's go to Exodus 34, verse 11 and 12. Did we write notes on this thing? Or yep. Today y'all writing your own notes. Exodus. So then y'all can remember stuff. Exodus 34, 11 through 12. Steve, can you do that for me? As soon as I can get this page to flip. Okay. And you said 11 through what? 12. Be sure to observe what I am commanding you this day. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorites before you, and the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Watch yourselves that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land unto which you are going, or it will become a snare in your midst. So let's talk about this. What's a snare? Like a trap that mm -hmm. he said, be careful, right? To do what? Not Read it again, Steve. With them. Not to make a covenant with them. And do you remember in what Miss River just read in Joshua? All those people were mentioned in Joshua 9 and 1, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And are they all getting together? Those to, are the ones they're meeting. And they're making a covenant to fight against Israel. Well, they don't have to make a covenant. They they all Canaanites. They all Canaanites, Hivites, they all know because they, they know that God going to get them. They knew that already. Okay. Okay. So God warned, this is an Exodus, which means he's talking to Moses, which means who was there when he was talking to Moses? Joshua. Correct. So Joshua knew what he said in 34, 11 through 12. Okay. So he knew that. Let's put a pin in that. We know what a scenario is. We're going to put a pin in that. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20. Verses 10 through 18. Mm -hmm. okay. And boy, can you read that for me? Yeah. I want you to keep your finger on that for me, um, Steve, on that um, Exodus. This leave us kind of fold that in because we want to go back to that when we get to Joshua. Go to 20 and um, verse 10 through 18. Whoa. Alright. Here we go. <laughs> I'll stop you if it's too much. Go ahead. When you approach a city to fight against it, you shall offer it terms of peace. Okay. So that's the first thing. You need to underline or write on your notes. God said that they were supposed to give them terms of peace. Right? Go ahead. If it agrees to make peace with with you and opens and opens to you, then all the people who are found in it shall become your forced labor and shall shall serve you. Okay, so he said you you supposed to make peace with them, and if you do make peace with them, they're gonna be your slaves. Forced labor, your slaves. Okay, go ahead. However, if it does not make peace with you, but makes war against you, then you shall besiege it. So that means if they want to fight with you, kill them. Go ahead. When the Lord your God gives it unto your hand, you shall strike all, all the men in it with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. Only the women and the children and the animals and all that is in the city, all is spoil. You shall take as booty for yourself, and you shall use the spoil of your enemies, which the Lord your God has given you. So we understand they're going to kill the men. They're going to keep the kids and the women. We're going to talk about what they're going to do with the women and the kids. Not the kids, particularly, but with the women. Because what you do, you take the women and Make wives out of them, right? Because they're commodities. They're, they're, um, they're, they're, uh, I hate to say like livestock, but they are. Because you can, you can, you can trade women and do things that you, whatever. And he said, take those livestock and everything else 
and you use it for your plunder. It's your bounty. He said bounty. So if we were a pirate, what is a bounty? Booty. A booty, I'm sorry, not booty. But what's a booty? Bounty. Okay, same thing, booty. right? You take it and this is going to be yours. It's like your money. Keep on. Thus you shall do all the cities that are very far from you, which are not of the cities of these nations nearby. Stop. Read it again. Thus you shall do to all the cities that are very far from you, which are not of the cities of those nations nearby. You, they say you do all of this to the people that are far from you, not from the cities nearby. Okay, so you need to write that down, put a pen in it, and do whatever. Because he ain't gave them instructions. This is Deuteronomy. This is still Moses. So who was there? When he gave them instructions. Joshua. Okay. So that means that Joshua knew. And had he been studying and meditating on God's word, he, he would remember what God told him. Mm -hmm. So this is only for the people of Foa. Right? Not for the people that live next door. Keep on. Only in the oops. Yeah. Only in the cities of these people that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance you shall not leave alive anything that breathes but you shall utterly destroy them the Hittite and the Amorite the Canaanite and the Perlite and the Hivite and the Jebulite as the Lord your God has commanded you okay the Habitites Write that down, circle it, underline it. They are one of the people they're supposed to completely destroy, right? Okay, keep on reading and finish. So that they may not teach you to do according to all their detestable things which they have done for their gods, so that you would sin against the Lord your God. Amen. All right, so we ain't, we ain't got the little note. You fold it a tooth. And come back to that. Okay. That's funner than I thought it was going to be. Because I saw something that I didn't see before. Amen. So, um, let's go to Joshua 3. But the, when the inhabitants of Gideon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they on their part acted with cunning and went out and made provisions and took worn out socks for the donkeys and to wine skins and wore out and torn mended with worn out patchy sandals on their feet and worn out clothes and all their provisions were dry and crumbly. And they went to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a distant country. So now make a covenant with us. But the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you live among us. Then how will we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where do you come from? They said to him, From a very distant country your servants have come because of the name of the, your, the Lord your God. For we have heard a report of him and all that he did in Egypt. Okay, so let's stop here. I'm sorry. Where was you at? Joshua 3. 3. Oh, 3. Okay. And I was reading all the way. In just chapter 9, verse 3. Okay, I was going to say. Okay. Y'all okay. see the problem? Did they disguise themselves or make themselves look poor or uh -huh. whatever? See, worn out clothes? And... The God's reputation preceded himself. Just like they know what happened in Egypt, they also knew that God was coming after them. So the Gibeon, Gibeon, um, Gibeon right, were Hivites. What I asked you to do in Deuteronomy, to underline that, right? Okay. So they knew that they weren't supposed to, they was going to get destroyed. But what Lloyd said, he, God told Joshua what? Don't make a covenant. Don't make covenant with somebody around you. Destroy the Hivites 
and all the other people, they got to be from a distant land. Further than. Further than, yeah, it's got to be gone. It can't be around the corner. It can't be where you can walk. It can't be the genocide stuff, no. the right stuff, all of them, right? But they knew that if they were from a distant country, that they could be their slaves Correct. and not die. Correct. So just because God told Joshua and Moses don't mean that the other people, the devil know what God said too. He knew that you had to be from a distant country and they had to act like, they had to make peace, right? What you say? They had to make peace, right? And not war. And, and, not war, and they could become servants. So the giving night, give um, give me a new, already what God has said, and so they used that against Israel because they knew that God had told them to make peace, and if you don't make, if you make peace, we can become servants, which means we can be saved, right? So they said we ain't gonna be like Ai and Jericho. We gonna get them and make them make a covenant with us so we could be saved, even though they should know better. Whole different from my message because it's deeper. Get the difference? Because now God and I already, I know we put you on notice. Put Joshua on notice of what to do. It was, if he hadn't meditated, think about it. He he basically, you and Lloyd just gave us exactly what Gibeon did. Does anybody else get what I'm excited, I'm sorry. Anybody else get what I'm talking about? He just laid it out. It's like, ta-da, these two, these two scriptures is orally, but he just told them what they was going to do. Am I incorrect? Like, did no, he not? he didn't. This is just like, he, he just wrote the story already. Now, this was in Exodus and Deuteronomy, which means this happened in Moses' time. Yeah. But Joshua was right there because he was his right-hand man. So Joshua should have remembered. Or at least, even if the... I always say the Gibeonites knew that what God said about them, but they weren't there for that. No, but you. But 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 the the fact is the word's cunning. Correct. They were cunning. They had saw what happened to Ai. They had saw what happened to Jericho. So their thoughts weren't necessarily what God told them. They were just trying to survive. Well, I also think. Because they there's no way they could have known what God said to them. You know what? Because they were in the wilderness. They were in the wilderness when they said that. And they but they was there. also in the wilderness. I, I I can feel the way I feel like this. I don't know. We'll have to research it. Well, I mean, I already researched it. There's no way that the Gentile nation of the Gibeonites heard what God had said to them. I'm not saying them specifically like they heard it. Yeah, I'm I mean, blaming you got to remember what they they think because okay. what you're saying is I'm blaming they it knew. on I'm blaming it on the person they worship, not them. Yeah, I, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying they're natural. If I see something happen to you that may happen to me, I'm going to try to figure out how not it happened to me. Correct. And all I'm saying, I'm just chalking it up to they didn't want it, so they knew they couldn't fight them, right? Because they already, they already heard about what Egypt, they didn't see what happened to AI, they didn't see what happened to Jericho, so what's the best thing gonna, they're going to do? We're going to try to trick them, right? Correct. But they, in order to, I guess to me, maybe I'm too logical, in order to trick somebody, you got to know their M.O. Mm -hmm. or what they will fall for. Yeah, and that's why I blame Joshua because the fact that God said, don't do it, the law, it had to come. Correct. Now, in verse 7 in, in Joshua, let's go back to verse 9 and 7. Well, if they didn't know, why wouldn't they just... Like, if they didn't know that that was the way it was supposed to happen, why wouldn't they just go to him and say, hey, I, I know we're next door and all, but if we make I don't peace know. And see, that's peace. something that I can't answer, and I Even understand what he is. You know what okay. I mean? But see, but you, but you got to look at geographically. Do you know how many miles away they were? So how did God tell them? I don't know. I'm not I mean, saying. I mean, just tell me, in your mind, how would God, you, he and Finn, God talked to him and Finn. God ain't talking to you at all. How would you know what God told him? You wouldn't. He, they're acting on what, read what it said. I saw what happened to, to, to the Egyptians. I heard what happened to the Egyptians. They didn't see it. They heard it. I heard what happened to Ai. I heard what happened to, the, to, 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 to Jericho. Survival mode for my people. We can't fight them. So what do we have to do? Trick them. Well, let me ask you a question. They, but 
they do have to know that God is after them. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about in Canaan. Yeah, they know that God is coming, but they can't fight them. They know they're going to lose. So they know, in order for, I see what Steve's point is too. They had to know that they were on the list of people that are going to be in trouble. Yeah, but they didn't know how far that expanded. No, they didn't know how far they expanded because in reality, they had to know that they were on the list because they were related to the Israelites. They're related to who? They, if you go back to the genealogy, remember when we moved back <laughs> before and we talked, you know, all of the, the Canaanites right, and all right. of Right, right. Everybody's really related. Everybody's related. Right. And so they, it was a pronouncement on certain tribes that got in trouble. Correct. And so they had to know the Gibeons had to know that they were one of those tribes that were in trouble. Right, they were part of uh, the Hiv the Hivites. The uh, not what's Jacob's Jacob's brother. Yes. People. Right. So they had, what I'm saying is they had to know they didn't know how and they when. they and when but they had to know they was in trouble. Yeah. They, so and and they heard it based upon what had happened to. Correct. To the people so, that already happened to. So my question is, and I guess I'm with Steve on this, and I'm glad we're talking about this. Just like Rahab knew about what happened in Egypt and what about this God, are we saying that they don't know how power, how powerful God is and that there was something was going to happen to him regardless? Well, they had their own gods. Correct, but they knew they had heard of what this God has done. They, but again, you got to think of it, think of it like this. As we do, we hear what God do every day and don't pay no attention to it. Correct. So let's let's make them human too. Correct, but they they they, uh, they heard what God did, but they know what God just done. And, this ain't happened to hundred years ago. And, and, and what I'm saying is, the sin of man is such that God can do it right in front of your face, and you'll pretend like it ain't gonna happen to me. And all I'm saying is, with for them, if you read some other commentaries, for them, it tells us that. That nation, like you said, from the brother, from the loins of, of Abraham, that nation that wasn't Jacob, that's who they are. Mm -hmm. They were cursed. Okay? <laughs> Being cursed don't mean you walk around talking about I'm cursed. They live in their life. Correct. Okay? Here comes the the prophecy, Israel, mm -hmm. the brother, Jacob, to come take back. Because you got to remember, Canaan was where they already were. Yeah. They got kicked out of Canaan. Yeah. See, so you got to go back and say, well, why is Canaan so important? They got kicked out of Canaan. Right. Okay? So now they're coming back to Canaan, and these people have been living there for hundreds and hundreds of years. So now we have this thing, because you're, you're talking about the Egyptian thing, you got the Egyptian thing is now probably almost 80 years ago. It was just probably more than 80. Yeah, this, you got the Egyptian thing, wasn't yesterday. So you have a whole generation where this is still just a, it's a fantasy now, it's a fairy tale. Here come the because we don't because when we read it we read it like bam 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 but we don't know how long after the forty years yeah, wilderness was forty years itself and then yeah that, we don't know how long it was for Jericho. Well, Joshua was eighty when they came out the wilderness. Yeah. So all I'm saying is all I'm saying is is that sometimes an enemy knowing what they're up against. Here comes the prophecy because I'm, I'm gonna read this. The prophecy was known. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just. They're more cunning. I like the word, just like the devil. The devil was cunning. They were cunning. They were smart, actually. Shoot. We knew the prophecy was coming. Either two things going to happen. We're going to get destroyed or we're going to be made slaves. Mm -hmm. We don't know which one we're really going to be, but let's take a chance and let's be their slaves. But they were supposed to get, what, destroyed, right? They were supposed to because he because told them not to make a covenant with them. Now, my next question would be, the question I had in this lesson was, once you make a covenant, you can't break it. Correct. Because they could destroy them right then and that's what they lied. Mm -mm, they couldn't. So why is it that even under a lie, I got to keep my word? Because they made a covenant under God. So if I make a, uh, and I'm just throwing this out there, so if I make a covenant under God that's not right, I got to keep it. Correct. Why? Because God's word never void. <coughs> that's why, that's something else I was going to talk about in the lesson okay. we're talking now. Mm -hmm. That's why you shouldn't swear. Mm. Swear is swearing. When you, I don't when they say swear the whole truth. I don't swear. I say affirm. Because if I swear and I lie, I make God a lie. Okay. When you swear, when they swore a covenant, they swore in God's name. Right. So when we swear 
on under oath, well, that's what I'm talking about, the people who can't see, mm -hmm. you're swearing that what you're saying is truthful. Okay. But just because you swear that what you're saying is truthful don't mean that you're not going to lie. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? <coughs> In a covenant, there's no perjury. You got to deal with the consequences. Of your... Of your, your of your deceit, of your covenant. And God's going to, if you say, I swear this before God, that means that that covenant will be fulfilled. So in other words, are we blaming Joshua again for not consulting God before he made a covenant with them? For, yes, he should have. Because remember, yeah. in the beginning in chapter 1, mm -hmm. keep going back to chapter 1, mm -hmm. he told Joshua on purpose Consult. to seek and meditate the word. Uh -huh. that he, so if he seeks him, so he can lead his people. He can lead his people. Every time he forget to seek, something happens. Something yeah. happens. Yeah. Chapter seven means that not only Joshua, I'm not only blaming Joshua. The men, the, the leaders of Israel knew better because they asked him in chapter seven. Yeah. What? Read for me, Steve. What they said in nine and seven. Yeah. Should we pick up? Oh, uh, chapter nine verse seven. Mm -hmm. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, "Perhaps you are living within our land." How then shall we make a covenant with you? So the question was raised. You already knew you had some. That's one of my notes. Let me get back on track because I'm getting too excited. <laughs> Peanut going to be flopping around more. This is the first mention of Gideon in the Bible, in Joshua. Okay? I talked about this in my sermon. You seen them Gideon books? Those are people. Descendants, not the same people. Yeah. So the Gibeonites or Gideonites? The because Gibeon is with a B. Gideon yes, I'm pronouncing the wrong. It's with a B. Okay, so G I B E O. The, the Bibles are Gideons. I thought they were. Um, no, they're not Gibeons. <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought they were. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I said, yeah, these are Gibeonites. Okay, so this is Gibeonites. This is mm -hmm. the first time they appear in Joshua. Mm -hmm. Um, Joshua and they knew what was supposed, how they were supposed to deal. With those specific group of people, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Jebudites, because we just went to 34 and 11 and in Deuteronomy 20, right? Right. So therefore, the Hivites, the Israelites knew that the Hivites were slated for destruction. Correct. And they were not supposed to make a covenant with them. Correct. So I said, you can't fool God, but you can fool man every time when they don't seek counsel. Amen. Right? And we talked about Proverbs 19 and 20. We can read that later. But that's basically saying you were fooled. Correct? Right. So, always go with your first mind. That's what now you're <coughs> telling me. Your first mind told you to stop. Don't go. Don't don't pass. Don't collect $200. That's what their first mind told them. Mm -hmm. And they didn't go with their first mind. Let's, let's hold up and say, not, we ain't even got to consult God right now. Just one second. God gives you discernment, right? The Holy Spirit, which is present in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we just don't talk about the Holy Spirit, gave him some discernment in 9 and 7. Hold up, how we don't know that you, that you don't live near us? First thing in my mind, you coming here for what? How you know I was even here? Why think about it? Why would some people from far away come here? How did you even know I was here? Right. You wouldn't have known I was here unless you, were unless you was close. And how would you know to travel to us? Yes. And not to them. How you know them. I'm Joshua? How do you know who I am? How did you know we left this mount and came back to Gilgal? You had ain't no way you would have known that. And if you're coming from a, a far country, somebody from Russia don't know that I'm here. Unless they they in St. Louis and they know it. and they've been watching me, so that's number one. That's what killed me. I'm like, huh? That didn't make sense. But they wouldn't even take the common sense. Not even I ain't saying forget consulting God, but you wouldn't even use your common sense. Mm -hmm. And when your common sense don't work, you should have consulted God because then God would have brought to Joshua remembering. Remember when I told you. Back in um back in back a couple of years ago in the wilderness, what was gonna happen? And you just had to write all this stuff down a couple of days ago. He had to consult. So let's go to eight. Read that for me. They said, Joshua said to them, Who are you? And where did you come from? And they said, From a very distant country. Your servants have come 
because of the name of the Lord. For we have heard a report of him. And all he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, the Shemhan, the king of Hamon, and Og the king, and Basan, who live in Asherah. Which means we didn't talk about that, but that's what they did. So our elders and all the inhabitants of our country said, take provisions in your hand for the journey and go meet them and say to them, we are servants. Come make a covenant with us. Here is our bread. It was still warm when we took it from our houses as our food for the journey. And the day went set out to come to you, but now behold, it's dry and crumbling. These wine skins were new when we refilled them and behold, they were bust. And these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from the long journey. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel from the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the leaders of the congregation swore to them. So, partly Joshua did what God told him to do. He made peace with them because they were from a long, they were from a far country. He believed, they were, he he believed them. Mm-hmm. Because the evidence, this is the evidence. The evidence is, let's Dried look at up. The pan, let's look at a panhandler on the street. I don't know why that just popped in my head. The man that used to be at Famous Bar, which is, I don't know what it is now, the Macy's. Mm-hmm. He sit outside, looking dirty, teeth and messed up, asking for money. So in your mind, he's poor. Christmas season, you give him money. Or you run into the store to avoid him. And then, I get on the bus, and the same man is on the bus and paying his fire, going to his home because he's a paid panhandler. So this is exactly what the Gibeonites did. They are fraud, cunning, and deceptive. So the evidence to Joshua is, okay, they bread is crumbly, they clothes are worn out, and they say they believe in God. And they wine skins. And they wine skins, right. And everything. So looking at them, you would think they were from a far land. Because if they weren't from a far land, none of this stuff would have happened. Right. So then they give them provisions, which means they feed them, and they swear to them allegiance that you, you could be with us. When they should have been destroyed. When they should have been seek God. So do, let me ask you this question, and they asked this in the in commentary. And I want to really know what y'all think. Do you think that since they left high ground, they had just left in chapter 8, when they was at um, the two mountains, right? Mm-hmm. That they thought that they were at the height of discernment. So what I'm saying is, is that you just got through prayer service and you really like high on God. And this happens. Do you think that the, you still got the Holy Spirit on you to enough to know you don't even have to seek God because you connected with God that close. And so do you think that that has something to do with why they didn't seek God? Yeah. Because because the Bible, like, as we continue to study the Bible, that happens to them all the time. They have they have a victory. They have some success. And it's something in us, once we have success, we tend to show whatever God told us, even if what, is, what we know was good to get us there, we tend to say, okay, I got it now. I understand how God's doing things. And what God has always shown us is he, had, he runs on principle, not necessary performance. Correct. So just because we did it A, B, C, we walked around the building this way, mm-hmm. you see they never did that again. Correct. But God says, still, seek me. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's what happens. We want cookie cutter. One of my biggest uh, concerns is everybody's looking to, when they study the Bible, we're going to put this in a cookie cutter. This, this, this. And when I try to tell them, God does what he wants to do. And you have to be flexible enough to say, okay, God, on Tuesday you did it this way. <laughs> and we were successful. But Wednesday, strike the rock. <laughs> you can't mean? go nowhere. I can't go. Why can I go into the land of Egypt? Because I struck the rock. Well, why, why did I strike the rock? Because you did so Because Because you didn't cons- think about it. You, didn't, you cons- didn't ask me. You didn't ask me. And that's our problem. And I had told you what to do. And that you didn't time. Yeah, but the biggest thing I told you to do was consult me. Correct. And and not strike the rock every time you want water. Correct. 
And that's our problem. We want to take what we did yesterday into today's battles. And God said, first thing you need to do is ask, ask me, do I want you to fight with what you fought with yesterday? And for and people don't know who he's talking about, he's talking about Moses, right? Yeah. That's why he didn't go yeah, to the promised land, yeah. despite and, what other people think. And, and I find that in our own walk now with Christ, even though the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit lives in us, it didn't live in them. The Holy Spirit would come down and do stuff Correct. with them. We got the Holy Spirit in us, but we won't even let the Holy Spirit in us guide us. What I'm saying is, is that they felt like they still was connected to God because they yeah. just did the blessing and the curses. Yeah. And they was like, they had just came off this high. They get back in Gilgal. They had just defeated all these people. They they got that high. The promises. The promises and everything is, oh, we're getting what God told us to do. We're excited. Mm -hmm. So then all this high in the cloud thing, the, the discernment part was Goes missing. out the window. Yeah. yeah they and got so what they, wanted. they got fooled yeah, because they was high. On Amen. success. Amen. Right? So let's think about it. The Hivites and the Canaanites, all of them live like 25 miles away from them. So if they had just did they do diligence, they said, okay, I'm we're gonna put y'all in this little corner for a minute. You know, we're gonna put y'all go our job. Let's go see if they actually because you know, people got characteristics. Right. You know, see if that is they could have done that, or they could have seek God counsel and be like, nah, these not don't pass go, don't collect two hundred dollars. Right. But they didn't. But you know what was weird about this? Any other time they sent out spies. Correct. To go spy and out where they're going next. And he didn't. Right. Yeah. Because he and the reason why I said Joshua almost did what God told him to do, because Joshua remember, Joshua remembered the covenant part. The covenant part that said if they come in peace, right, let them have it. Let them have it and they do labor. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why he was like, Oh, this is now the cookie cutter. That's exactly the cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. They did everything that God said they was going to do. Look at something. Right. So he said, this the man. Check. <laughs> um, they talking about we love God. Check. Check. They come in peace. Check. Okay. We're going to make a covenant with them. Mm -hmm. Because Joshua is a military person. So, of course, you very logical. Check, check, check. So they got to be. And they have the evidence by their clothing, Correct. their wine skin. And they said, we've they heard said, the report of God. The uh, exact same thing as uh, Ogre, uh, Rahab said. Yeah. So they had, to, they had to hear the report of even her covenant with them. She the only one. She They had to know. Oh, she, what she still doing there? Somebody talked. I don't know right. who. But some, some way, somehow, they knew that they these people was coming for them sooner or later because they had a council meeting. They had already defeated Jericho, AI, and then we just read that the they had defeated some too. other places too right. that we not we didn't discuss. Yeah, read over the Chronicles, yeah. Okay. So they had heard about this stuff. And so they like, okay, we're gonna get them, we're gonna get them at their own game. Cause if they swore before they died, they knew that if you make a covenant with God, even the devil know that. Because they were God's people. Correct. You make a covenant with God, Israelites can't say go back on they they can't go back on their word. Because mm -hmm. that's all they got. Okay, let's go back. I got too excited, y'all. Um, and Israelites and not unlike us lack spiritual wisdom because they either forget or are so arrogant that we don't consult the one who guides us. And reference James 1 and 5. Okay? So let's go to 915. I that so exciting. Hey, hold on, let's go back to that. that plays in very to what we're talking about pride. Oh. Arrogance is pride. Right. So you get so prideful that we don't consult God no more. So that goes into what you guys were talking about yesterday on Monday. Right. I just wanted to show you that. Okay. Arrogance and pride are the same. 16. <coughs> At the end of three days, <laughs> I love three days. Amen. They had made a covenant with them they heard that they were the neighbors and that they lived among them and the people of israel set out and reached their cities on the third day now their cities were gibeon chipper i'm gonna pronounce this wrong chipperiah beth roth Ketharajim. but the people of israel did not attack them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord of God of Israel, 
Then all the congregation murmured against the leaders. But all the leaders said to the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel, and now we may not touch them. This will do to them, let them live, let the wrath be upon us, because of the oath that we swore to them. And the leader said to them, let them live. So they became cutters of wood and drawers of water for all the congregation, just as the leaders had said to them. So um, the an interesting fact is the leaders of assembly is mentioned four times in Joshua. It's mentioned in 9 and 15, 9 and 18, 9 and 19, and in Joshua 22 and 30. Then it's mentioned five times in Numbers, 4 and 34, 16 and 2, 27 and 2, 31 and 13, and 32 and, and 2. So, when we say congregation, we're not talking about a church. We're talking about the people of Israel. And you know they pick people to represent each tribe. And so the tribe, the leaders, the leaders of assembly made covenant with these people. And, and so the people like, hold up. They know the law just like everybody else do. We weren't supposed to make a covenant with them. They just died when God talked to them. <laughs> What's up? And what they say, no, nah, we can't renege on our promise. So now these people are going to serve as woodcutters and they're going to serve, well, they're calling it the church which means that they're going to be slaves. And what and so what the covenant says, and we learned this in Ezekiel, the slaves now get a what? Anybody remember what happened in Ezekiel? The land, the slaves become part of the community. Oh, yeah, they, they get uh, like a lot of stuff. They get, they get, um, they get, they are like a citizen. They, they, get, they go and get a portion. They get a portion. That's what I want you to say. They get a portion. So the giving, the giving, like basically later on, gonna, they get to keep something because they now they're gonna be part of the community. When in reality, they're supposed to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you think about it. So the leaders have made this decision, and you like, oh, they, they don't. You know, you you frustrated because you know if you do something wrong, you are gonna get caught off for it. What happened to Aiken? He got killed. Because Correct. Like, for disobedience. So they're like, huh? <laughs> I just disobeyed what God said. Think about let's be real about it. Would you they, would you be frustrated or mad? Yeah. Because you know for a fact that, hold up, my cousin just died for being disobedient. <laughs> and y'all have made a covenant with these fools and didn't even research. So now what? You should be able to question your leaders and say, hey, you wrong. And all they can say was, we, we made this covenant. We swore. So now we stuck like Chuck. We stuck. So right there, it shows that if you make a covenant with God, you got to finish it off. Now, let's just, just be realistic. In society nowadays, we make a lot of covenants. Do we actually fulfill them? But let's make it even here. Let's lie and use words. We, we make a lot of promises. Promises. Yeah, that we don't fulfill. Well, promises. Yeah, promises. But I think for real covenants, to me, it should be stronger. Are stronger. They're contracts. But you know, but then you know, as far as we're paying towards the New Testament, God just said, "Let your yes be yes, and your no be and no, and your no be no." And and that's and but that's not a promise. That's still a covenant. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's you still know? a a promise is. I promise that, you know, I say this all the time. You say you promise you're going to love me forever. That's a lie. Yeah. You're not going to be in love when I say love. I mean in love with me forever unless you work at it. Right. So don't make that promise because you human, you frickle. Right. But a covenant is supposed to be, especially when you swear before God, means that I mean this and I can't break it. Right. But doesn't so, the Bible warn us at some point don't swear anymore? Correct. But we still do it, and so we get we still got we still get caught up because we're using God's name in vain without the you using God's name without the intentions behind it. So what are type of covenants that we have now? Street 
to maintain the land. Biblical covenants that we have oh, now. Biblical covenants. Anybody know? You mean? Do anybody know any biblical covenants? Any prom like biblical promises? Any? Not promises, covenants. Like the return of Jesus? Not, not this return. I'm talking about between people. I'm going to sit back and wait. Because y'all know what covenant is. Somebody Google what a covenant is. If y'all don't know what a covenant is. It's marriage. A, marriage is a covenant. That should have been I'll get y'all started. Marriage. marriage. That should have been the first thing that popped in your head. Marriage is a covenant. And the people of God don't take that as seriously as we should. But God does. But God does. Because we are his bride. Correct. And so he's never going to break his covenant with us. But we break our covenant with him all the time. So if we break our covenant with him, we we break our covenant with our mates. Because God, God hates divorce, and I'm not condemning nobody that got divorced. But at the end of the day, when you make a covenant, I am not talking about when you... You do justice of the peace or whatever. When you make a covenant and you use God's name in it, it's a covenant. And it's serious. Because you making a promise that this is the person that God, you before God. And that you won't break it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what? Yeah, and, I understand that part. But right. What I'm saying is, but then you, you talk about that. The covenant is for the marriage. When you get married, they ask you, Raise your right hands, you swear this, that, and other. And you just Who, what do you mean, raise your hand when you got married? You raise your hand when you got married? Ooh. I think so. I, when she said, raise your right hand and do this, do that, do this. I'm like, oh. You talking about the sign of marriage license? Yeah. I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about the legal contract. Oh, okay. I'm talking it's, about the biblical covenant. Okay. It's a difference. Oh, man. Yeah, it is. Okay. You can, you can go to Las Vegas and get sworn in by the Justice of the Peace and you can sign your marriage certificate. You're legally married. You can get a legal divorce. I'm not talking about that type of divorce. I'm talking <coughs> about a, a, a covenant before God. It's a difference. I'm an attorney. I do dissolutions of marriage all the time. I don't like it, but I do. Because it's not my marriage that I'm dissolving. It's a legal document that I have to take care of. It's a law. But it's just like anything else. Even though you're divorced from the person, you always connected to that person. Whether you like it or not. You don't even have to see them, but you still connected to that person. Because when they begin day to end day, you were in the middle somewhere. It's still a covenant. All I'm saying is that we don't take covenants even with God seriously. We feel like there's an always a get out of jail free and an exit strategy to try to fool God on the covenant we make. There's always a but. Yeah, and ain't no but. It's a period. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like no, period, yes, period. But you know, the, the, the what's, what's interesting is we're looking at it from, think about it. That's how good God is. He never breaks his word. Correct. But we always break ours. If you read the book of Hosea, Hosea is about a prophet that had to marry a woman who was a, mm -hmm. a, a whore. And could not divorce and, her. And couldn't divorce her. Because God said, this is your wife. Can you imagine God, okay, Father God, Jesus. This is your bride. With all the sins we have, with all the, all the things we have, that's how good God is. But God he, won't leave us nor forsake us or break his word for us being his bride. Well, Rahab was a prostitute and yeah. she said that her uh, uh, Israelite. Yeah. And her line is in Jesus' line. Yeah. So God God give you mercy. And, and um, did I just drop something? Okay. But it, I just wanted to, I'm not trying to dissuade or say anything negative about anybody. All I'm trying to say is that when you make a covenant, you need to be uh, make sure that you when you make a covenant because we're not finished. We're gonna finish it out. Okay. When you make a covenant, you need to understand what you're promising. It's just like a contract. 
except there's a loophole in the contract. If, and, but if you write the right contract, there are no loopholes. So you just have to understand that when you make a promise before God, you got to take it seriously. That's why you shouldn't swear. I swear before God. Don't swear before God. Because you, what you swearing for? Because God, God, what's God got to do with your life? Mm. It's just your yes. I didn't do it. I did do it. It's just ain't no in between. Ain't no but, however, wherefore, therefore, in it. Okay, so let's finish this up. Sorry, I got too excited. Ugh. I'm begging for my preacher. Anyway. 22. Joshua summoned up them and said to them, Why did you deceive us? <coughs> saying, We are very far from you when you dwell among us. Now, therefore, you are cursed, and some of you shall never be anything but servants, cutters of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, Because it was told to your servants, for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. So we fear, fearly, feared and greatly for our lives because of you and did this thing. Mm -hmm. And now behold, we are in your hand. Whatever seemed good and right in your sight, do to us. Do it. So he did this to them and delivered them out of the hand of the people of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day cut of the woods and draw of the water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord. To this day is the place that he should choose. Mm -hmm. So wow. they said, he says, why did you deceive us? And they said, because it was told to your servants. For a certainty. Mm -hmm. The prophecy. Yeah. So they knew the prophecy. Mm -hmm. They knew that they were going to die. I'd rather be a slave than die. Right. You can't blame them. I would do the same thing. Correct. Oh, yeah, me too. So the giving rights received mercy, but now servants. Mm -hmm. The covenant must be abided by. Israel swore now they have to honor it because they sealed it under God's covenant. Mm -hmm. That is why you have to be careful what you swear on because it's under God's covenant. You must fulfill it. Even if you make foolish decisions without seeking God, he wants to honor our commitments. And since then, the given uh, given nights were covered by God's protection. Mm -hmm. Now, Joshua could have still killed them. But what's the problem with that? He was breaking his swear, or his promise. No mercy. No mercy. And he would have broke what they swore. Mm -hmm. Because what he did the check marks, but didn't do his due diligence. So that's the problem. He, if he had a consulted God once again, but not only Joshua this time takes the, 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 uh, the punishment this time, right? Mm -hmm. Because it said the leaders. Yeah. They made this covenant, not only Joshua. Mm -hmm. So they made the covenant and Joshua had to enforce it. So he's like the tiebreaker between the, the congregation and the leaders. Mm -hmm. Because he's like, I got to uphold what they did. I messed up because I should have told them no. But they knew better. It's not like, and it's exactly what I said on Sunday. It's not like they didn't see the sign in the road. If they, because why would you even? And then my question is with Joshua, this it don't frustrate me, but I, it kind of makes me like this is what we do all the time. Why are you ask them why, why they deceive? Why you deceive us? Because if they didn't, they'd have been dead. Right. If I'd have said I'm I'm from I'm from around the corner, please save me. Would you have saved me? No. Mm -hmm. That to me, that's like a rhetorical question. Because why would? <laughs> What you mean? Why I deceive you? That's all the way I'm alive. Mm -hmm. But they did the same thing the devil did to Eve. Mm -hmm. And then later on down the line, the protection of God, they still end up 
worshiping some of their gods mm -hmm. as we go to history. Because he, he knew what was going to happen. Because <clears throat> God said, if you don't do this to these groups, then you're going you to be consumed. You're going to yeah. be consumed. Yeah. Because you're going to be, gods. you incorporate. Yeah. See, it was okay with Rahab. Because Rahab, like, oh, I love Jesus. One yeah. person. Right. But you got this, uh, it's like, this ain't only one, five people. This is a whole nation. Right. Canaanites with different gods. So now, what does that, like, I have, we, we're going to go to chapter 10 next week, but what does that say to the other people? If we can trick them, we, we can be all right. Well, think about this couple things. If we can trick them, or we can have something they covet. Human nature. Yeah. That's the lust get, of the flesh, lust of the, the eye. The right. military strategy was really good. It was a non-violent military strategy. Because mm -hmm. we talked about in chapter 7 and chapter 8, chapter 6, 7, and 8, I keep talking about military strategy because Joshua was a military person. And so this is the thing. Let's, if the road were reversed, do you think the Hivites had would have spared their lives? No. They killed them. Because right. they word don't mean nothing. Well, the Philistines are part of that Canaan land, so we yeah. know what happens down the line. They just go to war with them. But at the end of the day, it's like we do this all the time. Like, you know, this is the season where I have to be like, I have to remember that God is never going to forsake me and he's going to take care of things. But it's hard for me every December. I feel like I go through this every December. Like, God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Because at this point, at this week, I'm like, I can pay my assistant, but I ain't going to get no paycheck on Friday. Mm. God, what you going to do? Because like, I'm sitting here like every month, every December and January is like this. I can, I will kid you not. That I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I'm like, and then I have to remember because God is God. I have to consult him. What am I going to do? Because I'm going to ride Peter to pay Paul. To cover bills, and I'm like, okay, then is where your faith at? Because it's the same, it's the same test and trial every December and January. Mm -hmm. To the point, I was like, dang, I should have took that job. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. you like, so I wouldn't even have to think about this. I wouldn't even job. have to think about this. But then I would be depending on a job for my every day instead of God. Because being self-employed is the greatest walk, walk of faith that you could do. Amen. Because you don't know where your next dime will come from. And so that's a, even a lesson for me. It's like <coughs> I have to consult God and not try to fix it, which is hard. You, we could criticize Joshua all day, but Joshua's human just like we are. And so right there, because... We don't consult God on things, even though he give us warnings. Like I keep saying, he keep giving us warnings. We 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 miss those signs. And you in your mind, you're like, how did I miss that? Because I ain't want to see. I put my blinders on. I put my blinders on for whatever reason. Because mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted what I wanted. My flesh wanted this. I wanted to see the good in the people and everybody. And not remember that we all got evil hearts. That's just being real about it. Joshua wanted to see. He wanted to do the check marks. The, 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 if people, Because they, in reality, they did not probably really want to kill everybody. Mm -hmm. But when you come to me and say, I believe in your God. I heard the report. And when they, he asked him, he said, well, why you deceive us? Because we know what you was going to do. We ain't done. We knew you was going to come for us next. And we ain't even trying to do all that. We want to live. I can't get mad at you for that. I mean, I, I can't. Because I would want to live too. I, it, 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 especially if I knew, if I told you who I was, you was going to kill me anyway. Right. That's so deep. And, it's, and that's the thing about God's word. You can read something and, and you can see something for the first time and then go back to it again 
and see something totally different. Because you was not supposed to see it until that time. So when I preached on it on Sunday, I didn't. I missed Exodus and Deuteronomy. I missed all that. I missed the uh, writing on the wall. Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk Truth Radio Podcast and Senior Pastor of Walk and True Christian Fellowship Church. I always get a question. How do I find you other than Facebook? Well, all you have to do from your smartphone or computer is Google Walk in Truth Radio, Dr. James Sutton. And there will be many platforms to listen to the broadcast from. You pick the one that you enjoy. We are on every podcast platform. If you go to your favorite podcast platform and just search Walk in Truth Radio, you'll see the footprint and that's us. You can subscribe there or simply Google us and listen to the latest broadcast of Walk in Truth Radio, where we teach the Bible line by line and verse by verse. So again, Google Walk in Truth Radio with Dr. James Sutton and look for the icon of the footprint in the sand. Peace. Hello, this is Pastor Jay. I'm excited to invite you to come over to listen to our broadcast on YouTube. Yes, Walk in True Christian Fellowship Church on YouTube. We have some great videos over there and you'll be able to listen to all the lessons and the podcast. So again, subscribe, like, and continue to comment and listen. This is Pastor Jay. Talk to you later. Peace. Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walker Truth Radio Podcast and Senior Pastor of Walker Truth Christian Fellowship Church. I want to invite all those in the St. Louis metropolitan area to come worship with us every Sunday at 8 a.m. at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ building located at 2301 Wallace Avenue. That's W-A-L-L-I-S Avenue 63114 in Overland, Missouri. Our Dig Deeper Bible Studies are held 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Our Rescue Addiction Recovery class is being held at 7 p.m. on Mondays. We want you to come enjoy the love of God, worship with us, and go line by line and verse by verse as we travel through the Bible. We look forward to seeing you, and one of the things you can leave at home is your wallet. We want you to come sit back, enjoy the fellowship, the love, and the great teaching that goes on at Walking Truth. This is Pastor Jay. I always want you to be encouraged to be blessed. And thank you for considering us as your place of worship.